Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKP. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of why you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can can and a can can, a can can, a can can, and a wheel. Now we're off to. Hey, y'all. Hey. And welcome back to the house. Okay. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hopefully, you all enjoying yourselves. Y'all had a great weekend and you're just winding down relaxing and having fun even if you're just sitting down looking at tv if you're just sitting down reading a magazine or the newspaper if that's still a thing and just enjoying yourself because you know monday morning we'll be here before we know it and okay y'all i've been doing everything y'all told me i don't post pinned and, and did everything about the new channel now that's what it looks like now i need y'all to go on over there and, and get it to going over there okay all right ain't gonna, ain't gonna mention it no more you might see it in the videos that I make that's my new channel but I ain't gonna ask y'all no more I get tired of asking family they don't want to do it they don't want to do it okay it's your choice it's your choice okay but we're going straight on into messy via shits via whatever via you think it is okay but we're gonna be talking about for the last and final time I think I did this would be my sixth episode of Nene's debacle of whatever you remember when she was on the real they did you know the tele tele um teleconference with her this was the one that she was calling herself trying to get back on the show. And she wanted to have a conversation with uh, Andy Cohen to get things to rolling again. But, you know, he did not put his, her name in his mouth. And that's where we are now. But I was just trying to figure out, ooh, honey, don't money change you. Don't money change your looks, honey. Now, Deshaun Snow is the one off to the right in the red dress. She's definitely have lost a lot of weight. And she's living her best life. When she was on the show... Her life seemed to be okay, but then it took took a turn for the worse and she ended up getting a divorce. But that wasn't on the show. She was just, you know, showing what she do and, and her love for the Lord Jesus Christ and going in the church, paying her tithes, serving the Lord and this, that, and the third. And the problem said, we ain't with that. So she politely left the show i think really on her own accord i ain't think they had to force her out she just knew it wasn't a good mix and then they had ratings that she was boring but i really liked her myself but as the years went by we had different cast members coming in trying to make it do what it do okay and of course nini said this is the house that she built but let's really dissect this thing let's really get in it to win it and see how instrumental was she because she's just trying to discount all the other ladies in in the show you know from the beginning to the inception that it is now she she just like those are just extras she is the shit you know what i'm saying so i'm like so kim didn't get nothing lisa Wu didn't get nothing sheree didn't get nothing candy didn't get nothing Deshaun, when she was on the show, didn't give anything. You just try and say you were the it factor. No, 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 no. Nee, 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 nee. You were the only one that was willing to fight with everybody to make an ass out yourself and uh, be the villain in a sense. The uh, what do you call it? The pro villain. Like you just deemed yourself. You're going to get everybody straight because this is your house. You know what I'm saying? This is my house and I live here. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, Nene, you were the only one ready right out the gate, jumping, trying to attack, trying to make yourself known with the many faces that you gave us throughout the seasons. Okay. Okay, and that's what got yourself looked at as the main person of the group that was going to be outspoken. You were more so as an aggressive extrovert. You want an introvert until, oh, you want to play boo-boo the fool and you want to be like, woe is me, woe is me. Greg is doing this. Greg is doing that. I'm not happy. I should be happy. You know, all that playing, you know, the dumb role or the sensitivity role. And, and you want people to like, ooh, feel sorry for me, 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 me. Okay, because you was out there, you were making your appearances all the way around the, the globe, you were on Extra, you was on TMZ, you were on The Real, you was on The View, um, Entertainment Tonight, ET Online, I mean, you were just everywhere, you were Extra, Extra. 
extra, extra. That's what you were, Nene. And you loved it. You loved it in, when anybody saw you in New York or California or Miami. They recognized you right off the bat. And the reason why they recognized you, Nene, is because you acted a damn fool. And most of the time when we're looking for drama and, you know, people just sensational with their comebacks and you were with those one-liners real good, but we didn't know that you were getting those one-liners from the gay community. I'm like, okay, where are your gay community friends now that you like to boast up? Okay, were you just using that gay community and you really didn't like them, Nene? You just used them for your comeback? But I just want to know, since you're saying this was your house you built are you on the director's board or nbc universals do you go to those meetings that they go to quarterly or annually um, is your name signed somewhere are you signing checks who makes the checks is it true entertainment who are those people nene are you up there with them baby did you resource some money uh, to make all these logos, to pay these salaries of these other employees, you know, that help make the show before the show is being seen? Do you pay the cast members? You know, your cast members, do, do you write a check for them, girl? I just want to know. Or are you an employee? Are you an independent contractor? Or are you just a worker bee? Okay, that's all I'm saying, girl. Because if you ain't uh, dishing out checks and they ain't got your name on there, you don't own shit. You don't create nothing. You were just an accessory to more accessories to make the show. Now, I need you to come off that first class airplane and come on back to Georgia and sit in the shit that you started. You set it off. Yes, Lord, you set it off. Now, we need you to come back, be in Atlanta, be recognized, be ready to get mess thrown at you or getting people coming up to you saying, ooh, girl, do you, should you really be doing that? And I said, come on back to Atlanta where you started this shit. Okay, because I heard and I saw and I put it on uh, in a video. You over there in Las Vegas now. Okay, what what sense does that make? You spending money that you don't have, or spending money I should say that you should be keeping, or uh, growing interest because you're gonna need it later on. You remember the time when you were cutting the food, talking about Kenya and Mob? Now we found out that Mob was an ads. Okay, so I give you that, and the rest of us got on his ads too, and for Kenya for even messing with somebody like that. But hey, she got baby girl Brooklyn, and that's really what she really really wanted. She wanted the White House, the pinky fits, and all that, but she got the baby, so that's okay. And do you remember you wanted to spit at her? You know, you had just got your mouth perched up to just drop some saliva, some secretion from your mouth to end up on somebody. Because when it hit the wind, it can go anywhere. But you really wanted it to hit Kenya. You remember that, girl? Do you remember that? That's all villain type uh, characteristics. Okay? Villain, evilness, just spiteful. That's what you were. And that's what you prayed in social media. But you just didn't do it on the show. You actually was doing this in real time. In real life. With the comings and goings of meeting people. You remember the airport fiasco. Which you got in, uh, got in a first fight with some lady. Or two ladies. You were doing too much. You still doing too much. You remember when you were in that beauty shop. Somewhere around Buckhead area. And or maybe it was Duluth area. I'm not really sure. But two people that were visiting from out of town recognized you and uh they wanted to just say hey to you and try to give you your your praises and you you know everything and you you just you let them talk and you just kept on shopping like you didn't know who they were or in your mind and in reality you just shun them in a sense but now oh uh, let's keep going okay if we must remember cynthia Okay, she had to burn up the friend tr contract several times on your behind. Because she thought she really was your friend. She wanted to be your friend. But you even treated her like shit. Okay, every last person on that platform you got into it with. Except for maybe Shamari DeVoe. But you didn't really get into her because she didn't last that long. Alright, but you know you got into it with Kenya Moore. And who is still there? Kenya, twirl, 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 fabulous, twirl, twirl. Twirl, fabulous. You remember her? Girl, do you remember her? The one that you said she made good television. 
Now, did she do wrong and not include us in her wedding, her her marriage and all like that? Yeah, she was wrong because we wanted to see we were being nosy as hell and she tried to keep all that shit to us. Now, y'all know I'm still standing firm. I really think she just paid him to be her her arm candy and, you know, maybe they did do the do, but hey... I, I don't know. I know the baby came looking out, looking like him. So I'm going to say that's his baby. He's saying it's his baby. And that's how we're going to go with it. But the marriage, <laughs> I'm gl- hey, I'm glad it was for hire because he was, a, oh, girl, I don't know if he was playing his tricks or his main role to treat you like shit. He did a very good job. He deserved an Oscar for that. Hmm, I wonder if we get Will Smith Oscar and give it to Mark, okay? But it is just what it is. But do you remember when we... Met Betty White, you were up and in it to win it. Yes, you was up in Hollywood, child. You were up there with Betty White, Angela Bassett. I mean, you were rolling with the rolling people. Now, I don't know how you got back down so fast. Okay, you was up there with Wendy Williams. Okay, the talk show gossip columnist. And she didn't even too much care for you. But then you again, you had said that Kevin had it out for you. And you were trying to take witness by He wasn't going to let that happen. Then you had your three swag boutiques. One here. One in the DMV. And I think one in Las Vegas. Hell, all of them are closed. Closed now. Closed, girl. And that was before Greg um, left this world. And you remember, that was your baby girl's sister. You remember? You remember her, Portia? Portia, y'all live in the same neighborhood. All right? You remember you went to Hollywood and did that little stuff? Think on Broadway as the <laughs> evil sister or Cinderella play y'all were doing. I don't know what the hell, but it didn't last long. Just like your stint, stunt or stink with, um, who was it? What did she go, Sean? Say? Oh, the Glee and New Normal. Those shows were just pilot shows. They didn't go anywhere either, but it blew your head up to where you had to think, uh, I need to go back to Atlanta. I need to go. Well, Glee wasn't, but for her, it was a pilot because she didn't go nowhere. And you remember her modest home she had before she moved into that mansion? Now, you see how having money can whip your ass and when not having the money can bring you back down real fast. Can you understand that, people? Can you understand it? So don't always wish for the green that's green uh for the grass that's greener on the other side. Live in yours, water yours, and it would be just as pretty. But do y'all remember her and Sheree got into it? She had said Sheree uh got some or was it she telling Nene, hell one of them was fussing about some car got repossessed, okay? When she was making them Trump checks and they was fussing in some uh, restaurant and then, you know, Nene just got up like like she always do. Don't finish your argument. And especially when they touching on some stuff and Sheree was trying to read her ass real good and I was right there for it. But of course, Nene just walked out on her and just, you know, bounced, all right? And all this shit really does happen in Atlanta, believe it or not. I don't know why they say we the Mecca. Uh, we, uh, like baby Hollywood, cause right now everybody getting on my ass on that traffic out there. Okay. I can't even go out there for just 20 to 30 minutes to an hour and enjoy myself. Cause it's too much traffic, too much congestion up in here. And I started noticing this shit in 2011. All right. So I don't know why these people moving here for the opportunity when they could just fly here. Don't leave here. Just fly here. Cause they tan up more woods and trees cutting them down to make subdivisions and and other little things and it's getting on my goddamn nerves but anyway it is what it is i have to live in it just like y'all do too all right but i just went off on a tangent i just had to do it that time but you know it, it, nini has friends she don't have any friends and i'm still looking for that women of excellence group that she called putting together women who had their own businesses and doing the whole thing and, and learning from one another you remember kenya told nini she was so nasty and so rude and she adopted that phrase and, and coined it i said uh-uh see i i got hey <laughs> <laughs> Nitty just be doing too much too fast and it just gets tiring after a time. So, as I have pretty much showed y'all in the video, that Nene didn't start shit. Okay, unless you're going to give her her props for starting shit and being the villain and being so extra, then I guess you can get her the title. All right, but. When she could have been showing us the softer side of her, like, what does her granddaughter look like now? I think we just saw her when her granddaughter was just this little, and maybe when she turned one or two. Then we ain't seen nothing of this granddaughter since then. What is going on? And they did offer Nene a, a, a show, a spinoff show, but she had to show her family. You know, in the comments and goings, and she didn't want to do that. I'm like, Nene, what you trying to hide, girl? What you trying to hide? 
Well, your boys doing something that they don't need to be doing, messing with the ooey and other things like that. God, tell us, tell us, tell us. Okay? Then you just said, when they start doing some freaky shit or whatever, we're going to cut the camera off. And that's the stuff that, you know, we ain't going to show that now. It'll be like an alluded to, you know what I'm saying, or to be continued. But we ain't showing my, my boys doing something illicit and illegal, okay? But I'll, I'll let you see a little of their life. And the girls, they messing with it, this, that, and the third. We've got to have a lot of NDAs flowing around. Now, every, we need signatures from each and everybody because I ain't paying nobody for nothing if it goes south. But this is the new faces we have. Okay, and then he's trying to destroy the house that she said she built. Now her name don't sign on nobody paycheck on nobody on no payrolls of those women right there. <laughs> but she said she built it. Did she come up with the concept? I don't know. Who really cares? Who? But do you really care? Or it matters. And if it did, you should have had your contracts right there signed and saying, "Okay, I had the concept for this idea. Y'all would pay me accordingly." And that's it. Okay. But did you forget about Lisa Wu? She had a little extra in there. She gave us a little sauce here and there. Of course, we wanted to know a little bit more about Keith Sweat because that's where she had her two boys from. But Keith Sweat, Keith Sweat said, you can be on that show, but my sons won't be there. So we never really got a chance to see that. Okay, now, you know, we, we always see Kenya Moore. She's twirling, twirling every day. But she's looking gorgeous out there in them streets. I got to do a video on her. She had on this pretty green emerald dress. I liked it. Ed. It was like soft, summery, and springish all in one. She's doing the darn thing. And she ain't trying to have no man on her, her hip, okay, or her, her arms. She's making it do what it do and solidifying revenue for herself and for her baby girl. And that's all it should be about. A man should be your accessory until he's trying to wife you. But you still don't you lose your identity when you become a missus all right you still have your own thing he has his own thing and y'all come together and make something okay similar to what candy and todd are trying to do over there but as mama joyce keep uh, uh telling us todd ain't shit okay todd ain't got nothing going on it's all candy <laughs> Every time I try to get Todd a little leg up, Mama Joyce come around somewhere in the scene and just tear it all down. Okay, and then we have to start back at uh, floor one. Floor one, okay? Because Candy ain't finna give up on her mama and she ain't finna give up on her man unless her man does something that she have to say goodbye. But Candy is straight up about her family. Family is over everything and she don't care. And I ain't got, I have no uh, qualms about that. Now, you know, and heard through the grapevine also. But I've been seeing it coming. It's been a long time coming. Candy likes being entertaining far as uh, being a spokesperson or a host. Is that far-fetched? No, it's not. I believe she could have tamed that because she's doing real well on her. Speak on it. Y'all remember that show? Okay, I don't like some of the guests she have on there, but it just is what it is. She's trying to get her foot in the door, and I ain't mad at her. But only thing I can say, pay attention, Candy, to the past people of color that have had their talk shows, okay? We ain't going to even include, uh, we, uh, that's what I say, Whitney Houston. We ain't going to include uh, Oprah Winfrey because, you know, she first started off catering to us and then she went to the white folks. Okay. Her whole panel was just lily white pretty much. And we had a little sprinkle here and there of people that look like us. So we ain't going to count her. Okay. But what we are going to count, since you are in the entertainment business, you remember when uh, Queen Latifah had a show and she had exceptionary extraordinary people of uh, the music world interviewing with her her show lasted less than two years i believe it was good it was good for the urban culture but it did have it really did not have longevity there so another point in taking uh what's her name cannon nick cannon a lot of people love him. I just can't get over how he's trying to act like he need to have a harem of children running around here. And his daddy was very approving of that. But that's neither here nor there. But what I'm saying is... <sighs> I would not put all my eggs in one basket trying to be a host because some people get it and some people do not. Now, from what I understand, you're up there with the illuminated ones, so yours might last a little longer. But then I said Queen Latifah was too. You know what I'm saying? Because really what they basically are looking at are numbers. And <coughs> I know you have a lot of people that ride for you. And I'm here with you here and there. You know, only when I, you know, because I'm unbiased. I ain't going to give everybody everything, especially when they're up there cutting the food out there. So we just got to keep it real. We give it 1,000% over him. Okay. And I am unbiased more than what people may think. Okay. I ain't for nobody. I'm for me. Okay. <laughs> so it just is what it is. I'm team me all day, every day. But 
uh, candid, too, a lot of people don't like you. You know what I'm saying? They like you, but because you're a giver and you feel for people, and, and that's good. That's a good thing. But as far as entertaining, um, I don't know if you can hold it because I saw you on Ellen, and that was a good pitch. But I, I couldn't see you doing that every day. Is what I'm saying, Candy. Uh, because uh, hmm, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just out. I'm out for the count for that one. I just think you are so wonderful. You're so amazing behind the scenes. You know, as far as developing stuff and, and putting stuff out there, but just being out there on the forefront. Uh, cause you know, I always saw you in escape as a background singer. I'm sorry. People gonna cuss me out. I know y'all gonna get in y'all feelings and it's okay. Cause on our platform, when you come to the house, everybody ain't gonna agree with each other, but we gonna be respectful. Like if you come at me and say, you don't know what you're talking about. Candy got this, 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 then the third, and she don't do this, 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 then I can get with you. But then when you start asking me what I got, why I ain't on TV, this, that, and the third, then that's where we have a problem and we have to dismiss you and lock you out the house until you come back under another name and you acting appropriately. But when we see you under that name trying to cuss me out and what I put out, then you got to go. Pretty much, pretty much said, okay? Other than that, we family. Everybody, like I said, everybody ain't going to like each other. But when it comes down to family, when it counts, we need to be there for one another. And that's what I'm saying. That's all of what I'm saying, people, okay? <clears throat> but... You know, I wish her well. If that's what she want to do, she want to put her foot in the ring and see what it do. Uh, okay. But don't get mad if them ratings start sliding down. Just like the whole thing with uh, Candy in the game. It was a good concept. You know what I'm saying? I could see it for the first three episodes. First two, whatever. And then it got boring to me. Because it's just like you following me. And you seeing me assisting patients. This, that, and the third. And doing what I need to do. That shit get tired and boring. Uh, real quick, real fast, real soon in a hurry. You know what I'm saying? You be like... You like what? What you gonna be saying? What you gonna show me? You gonna cuss out a patient? Is you gonna put them in their line when they talk to you bad? You know that's what people like drama. I don't care even in real life because on real life jobs you get drama and sometimes you be like in the uh, supervisor office saying why did you go off on this person? You know you can't do that because you got to you got to have on that extra face. You wear two faces when you go to work, whether you in your uh, own business as an entrepreneur or where you working for somebody else. You can't be who you really are half the time. Sometimes you got to fake the phone until you get out of that situation and you move into another situation. Then you could, because some people like people don't like the truth. You know what I'm saying? Even when it's put out there, you tell them what's straight. You tell them where to go. You get them direction, and they still fuck up down down the way. They they turn off right or they turn off left when you told them to keep going straight. And then they wonder why they in this, the mess that they in. And they're gonna come back to you trying to look for a reprieve, man. I'm like ah. I can't help you. You didn't follow directions. You didn't do what I told you to do. Even I may have told you in a harsh way. But it's probably because I don't told you so many times. You still didn't follow my advice. And I probably had to get mean with you that last time. Because it's like this is the last time. You're either going to do what I say do. And, and, and go right straight. What do you call it? Get it right straight. How my mom used to put it? God dog. Well she said something about fly right. Get yourself together and fly right. If you're not going to do that, I have to keep telling you the same old, same old thing. I'll stop talking to you. I can't take it no more. Because I'm not going to get myself upset. I'm not going to go through that ordeal, raising my blood pressure. And you don't act right. But see, um, with Ken in the game, it's just like, okay, okay. You got somebody that tell the tale all the time. We have those people on the job. Uh, you got to go... Uh, See how far you can push the envelope and give them what you want. You know, you come in late, you leave early, you're taking off all the time, you're calling sick out all the time. Hell, that's stuff we normally do. But where, where the mess going to start? You know what I'm saying? That's when we peak our interest peaks then. We find some curiosity to want to keep coming back. But see, that's not what Candace giving us. And I don't want to look at everyday ordinary people. I want to look at extraordinary people I can learn from and see what they made their mistakes so I don't make the same mistake. Because if somebody told me not to do this this way, I really better believe I'm going to uh, adhere to what they said. I ain't going to try that method because it was tried and true. They failed. Why the hell I'm going to fail? Why the hell I'm not going to uh, say, okay, thank you for telling me this and I'm not going to go down this street. But, you know, we got some folks, people tell them to don't do this, they still do it and then they end up like looking like a fool. Okay? Just like similar with what Nene's going through now. Okay. We, we told her to straighten up and fly right. Don't get the big head. Just because they give you a lot of opportunities. Pick and choose your opportunities wisely. Because you may need to come back. You know. Up the street from us. Where you don't left us. You might need to come back home. To this big house you say you built. But you know. Nene just got a lot of opportunities. Too quick. Too fast. In a hurry. And it just blew her head. Sky rocket open where she thought she could come back and get people checked out 
I'm like, no, you can't check us back in when you checked out, baby. We don't build our own format here, and we don't need to. And pretty much, the Raiders were still doing pretty fairly well because we had Kenya over there cutting the food up too. All right, but she just wanted to be seen, not necessarily heard, but when she was seen, she was heard. You get, you see how that, you see how that worked out for Kenya. She could be seen, say a little something, and, and this, that, and third, and give you a little something to come back to. That's just how she is able to sustain herself on the show because right now she's talking about for season 14 she gonna be the villain she gonna do that I'm like can you stop lying you're gonna let nobody cross you <laughs> you ain't gonna let nobody cross you and however you do it classy or trashy you're gonna get them folks straight out okay and tell them where they could go nicely or not nicely but either way we're gonna accept it because we love it okay that's the kind of drama we're talking about but you know like i said can it go and do it she better keep um Bob, Bravo in her back pocket and from what I understand and what I, I hear out there it's hard to do a television talk show because it's almost like you there you got to be taping so many episodes and you can't really go off and do film uh, or any other activities because you know uh, when you're filming something you have maybe three weeks to maybe two months to film on a particular uh, movie that's coming out and then you're done you can go back and doing what you want to do but when you're on a talk show you have to be there all the time because y'all be filming all the time y'all in one day y'all may uh, film five different episodes you know what I'm saying so it, it's, it's kind of sketchy and I don't know if Candace life is really gonna be where she can do bravo and then film because unless the show is going to be here in atlanta i would find it very difficult for her to be able to go to new york or la and be there for taping every day and then kind of fly but you know she young still 45 but you know i don't know sometimes it gets tiring uh so it, it just depends it's however she want to see it but somebody gonna be at home unless Candace still got that babysitter or a good friend that's watching while Todd can go with her. Cause Todd can't, he seems like he can't stay at home with the kids. He just loses his mind and he be oh uh, angry and he go out there and do some crazy shit that Candy have to you know nudge him back on. Like you, you getting too close to that line that I told you is unforgivable. Okay, I mean I forgive you, but you're gonna be out of my life. So you know he be doing sketchy shit like that. So he really kind of can't assist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how y'all want to look at y'all be saying Tommy make his mind Tommy producing what the hell can be doing? I think she be doing the same thing and they both be collaborating in a way where they're gonna listen to Candy. They're gonna listen to Todd because can can't I mean Todd is not candy. I don't know how many times uh no just had to come out here and tell y'all what the streets are saying. <laughs> And we know Candy be telling the truth to her family members. So and that's what gives Mama Joyce her ammunition to use uh, <laughs> on Todd. Because I think how my daughter said, she, you only had five uh, cases in the chamber. She don't use three. So she ain't got but two more. So I'm like, what? Because Mama Joyce be coming ready, lot loaded, and ready to spray <laughs> on Todd. Because she still don't like him. Out of all this time, they don't been married, what, 8, 12 years? <laughs> <laughs> and Mama Joyce still be saying, Todd is not good for my daughter. But it is going to be what it is. That's what Candy love. And, and, and we should say Candy should keep uh, Mama Joyce out her in her marriage life. But Mama Joyce going to be there. <laughs> we like it, love it. It doesn't matter. Mama Joyce going to be there until the Lord take her home. And then on birthday there too. <laughs> but it's like, well, I got to pick up where Mama Joyce left off since she's no longer in the world. Candy is my baby now. <laughs> so Todd ain't got a chance in hell. But anyway, he like it. He love it. That's why he's still there. Or oh, I'm sure they had a prenup agreement. And once that uh, comes up and expires, he might be acting out on candy ass. We don't know. But she'll just buy another man. This is how she do. She's good at what she do. And she don't care uh, what anybody says or thinks about it. And that's what you should do when you're a boss. If you like it, everybody else should love it. <laughs> Especially when she taking care about everybody in the household, and then her other family members that she don't even they don't even live with her. But let's just say she a good person. She a good person. But hopefully she don't sell her soul. And if she has, God have mercy on her. But that's all I got to say, people. I'm done. I ain't got no more for this video. But y'all remember, okay? Share, like, love my videos, and I will be back. All right. But other than that, y'all enjoy y'all Sunday, and I'll see y'all next video. Bye-bye.